Hi there. In this video I'll be answering a question about the magnetic induction at a distance from a current carrying conductor. Don't worry, it's easier than it sounds. Here's a question from the 2009 Old Advanced Higher paper. A student uses a probe to measure the magnetic induction near a long straight current carrying conductor, PQ, as shown in figure 8A. The following data is obtained. We're then asked to calculate the current in the conductor PQ. Let's give ourselves more space to work out the answer. This is the equation to use. B is equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r, where B is magnetic induction 1.7 times 10 to the negative 7 tesla from the table above. Mu naught is a constant called the permeability of free space, which can be found in the data sheet. I is the current in the conductor, which we're trying to find, and r is the distance from the conductor, which is stated in the table as 0.25 metres. We can make current I the subject of the equation by dividing both sides by mu naught over 2 pi r, which is the same as multiplying by 2 pi r over mu naught. So our equation becomes I is equal to 2 pi r b divided by mu naught. We then substitute our values into this equation like so, which gives us a current of 0.21 amps. Part B says the unit of magnetic induction is the tesla. Define one tesla. So unless you have a wonderful memory and can just remember this definition, it helps to have a starting point to work from, and here it is. F is equal to ILB sine theta. This is the equation which allows you to calculate the force experienced by a current carrying conductor of length L meters placed in a magnetic field of magnetic induction B tesla. I is the current in the conductor and theta is the angle between the conductor and the magnetic field. The first thing we can do is rearrange the equation so that magnetic induction B is the subject. Just divide both sides by I L sine theta, like so. You've maybe seen this experimental setup before, which allows you to investigate the factors affecting the force experienced by a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. Well, let's imagine that the conductor was placed, as shown in the diagram, so that it was perpendicular to the magnetic field. This would mean that theta is 90 degrees, and therefore that sine theta would equal 1. If the current in the conductor was 1 amp, the length of the conductor in the magnetic field was 1 meter, and the conductor experienced a force of 1 newton, then it follows that the magnetic induction B must be equal to 1 tesla. This is the basis for our definition. So we can say that 1 tesla is the magnetic induction of a magnetic field in which a conductor of length 1 meter, carrying a current of 1 ampere perpendicular to the field, is acted on by a force of 1 newton. The key to this definition, as I said before, is remembering which equation to use at the start. This is part C of the question. There's some debate whether this type of question would come up in a CFE advanced higher paper, but I've included it because the physics is fairly straightforward and we can use the same equations as in part A and B, which you'll find in the CFE relationship sheet. So the question says, a second long straight conductor, RS, carrying a current of 2 amps is placed at a distance of 0.25 metres from the first conductor, PQ, as shown in figure 8B. Calculate the magnitude of the force per metre acting on conductor RS. This is the table we saw earlier, which tells us that the magnetic induction at a distance of 0.25 metres from the conductor, PQ, is 1.7 times 10 to the negative 7 tesla. This is also the distance between conductor PQ and conductor RS. So conductor RS experiences a magnetic induction of 1.7 times 10 to the negative 7 tesla due to conductor PQ. To answer the question, we use this equation again. F is equal to ILB sine theta. And to find the force per meter, often called the force per unit length, we divide both sides by L, giving us F divided by L is equal to IB sine theta. We can then substitute our values into the equation like so. Just remember that current I is the current in conductor RS, and that magnetic induction B is the magnetic induction experienced by conductor RS due to conductor PQ. When the conductors are parallel, then conductor RS will be perpendicular to the magnetic field surrounding conductor PQ, so theta is 90 degrees, making sine theta equal to 1. We should then get an answer of 3.4 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons per metre. I'll now show you another way of finding the answer by deriving an equation for the force per unit length between two parallel conductors. This is a derivation which is required for the old advanced higher physics course. Remember that we calculated the current in conductor PQ in part A of the question. We'll call this current I1. 
Recall the current in conductor RS I2. The magnetic induction at a distance from conductor PQ can be calculated using this equation. B1 is equal to mu naught I1 over 2 pi R. And obviously it depends on current I1. The force experienced by conductor RS is calculated using this equation from before. F is equal to ILB sine theta. Although it's important to note that the current we use, I2, is the current in conductor RS itself. And magnetic induction is equal to B1. Since conductor RS is within the magnetic field surrounding conductor PQ. Again, we can find the force per meter by dividing both sides by L. As I said before, when the conductors are parallel, then conductor RS will be perpendicular to the magnetic field surrounding conductor PQ. So theta is 90 degrees and sine theta is 1, meaning we can simplify the equation further. Next, we can substitute the equation for magnetic induction B1 into our equation for force per unit length, like so. Then, with a little rearranging, the equation becomes F over L is equal to mu naught I1 I2 over 2 pi R. Substituting our values into this equation gives us this, which again gives an answer of 3.4 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons per metre. And that's the end of this question and the end of this video. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.